I'm Daniel Finley with the Institute for Transportation Research and Education at NC State University. I'm going to share some research we've worked on related to the surveying technology of LiDAR. Our research team included Jeff Chang, Caitlin Tsai, Chris Cunningham, and myself. I want to acknowledge our project sponsor, the North Carolina Department of Transportation, and we appreciate the opportunity to work on this study. The cooperation of NCDOT units, groups, and individuals, as well as other state transportation agencies and the North Carolina State Highway Patrol were essential for this effort. The purpose of this research study was to provide guidance on how and when LIDAR can be effectively and efficiently deployed on the types of applications that are useful in terms of transportation infrastructure and traffic operations and who would benefit from the technology. LIDAR systems are becoming increasingly popular in states across the U.S. However, there are no consistent policies or guidance for determining when LIDAR should be utilized instead of alternative survey methods. The potential for LIDAR to be used in almost all areas of surveying is evident. However, the high definition and 3D modeling capabilities a LIDAR system provides is not always necessary. This project worked to identify the potential applications of LIDAR and provide guidance to engineers and surveyors on its use. In this effort, we present a review of the published literature and state of the practice, a section of one-page summaries on LIDAR deployment, a synthesis of current utilization by various NCDOT units and other state agencies, and a conclusion of lessons learned and recommendations based on the knowledge gained through our research efforts. Light detection and ranging is a tool used by surveyors, engineers, and technicians to collect geometric and geodetic information about targeted surfaces. LiDAR systems integrate lasers, sensors, and in some cases GPS and INS to provide a three-dimensional model of the site being scanned. The initial model, or raw point cloud, is a conglomerate of individual laser returns plotted in a digital space. LiDAR is a non-penetrating technology and therefore does not capture subsurface or underwater features. The three most basic platforms of LiDAR are fixed terrestrial, mobile terrestrial, and airborne. Fixed terrestrial systems are mounted on tripods similar to those of traditional total stations. Mobile terrestrial systems make the use of ground vehicles and airborne systems can scan from fixed wing or rotary wing aircraft. Each platform varies in terms of application, cost, data collection time, and accuracy. Some of the concerns of LiDAR include the generation of large data files and the need to manually remove extraneous data, the required computing power and software tools, and the potential of a steep learning curve for users. Some of the benefits of LiDAR include safety for users since no lane closures are required and dangerous terrain can be avoided in most cases. A scan can take a fraction of the time to complete compared to traditional methods. The ability to scan previously unreachable areas. The ability to remine the same data set used for many different attributes and the ability to make better decisions based on more precise data. Based on the research and experience from LiDAR users, we developed this chart to rate the various factors of LiDAR utilization. Applicability was determined by the number of useful applications each platform has for transportation related projects. While more of our case studies presented fixed terrestrial deployment, future trends toward mobile terrestrial platforms are apparent as the technology advances. Cost effectiveness relates to the economy of implementing one system over another. While fixed terrestrial LiDAR produces the highest detail, the scanner is limited to the effective range relative to its setup location. Therefore, as the required number of setups increase, so too does the cost of time and labor. Data collection productivity of mobile and airborne systems are higher than that of fixed because of the large areas that can be covered in a single scan. Ease of use is based on the operating tasks required of each platform. Mobile terrestrial and airborne systems also incorporate GPS and INS devices, which adds to the operating tasks of scanning. Additionally, airborne LiDAR requires a licensed pilot for aircraft operations. Level of detail depends on the accuracy obtainable for each platform. Fixed terrestrial produces the highest absolute and relative accuracies. Post-processing efficiency is relatively low for LiDAR. Where LiDAR generally has advantages in data collection productivity, it lacks in post-processing. Ultimately, the amount of post-processing required of point clouds depends primarily on the level of detail and application. Safety, for the purpose of our study, primarily relates to the reduction of potential hazards to field personnel and the traveling public during transportation-related data collection. 
It is the key advantage that LiDAR has over other surveying methods. By using fixed terrestrial scanners, the time required and exposure to field conditions is significantly reduced. Moreover, mobile and airborne systems allow operators to scan with the flow of traffic and completely away from the highway, respectively. We found a general distinction between LiDAR providers and end users. Providers, as we have defined, are the groups collecting geometric or geodetic information through LiDAR. The High Definition Scanning Group currently operates the fixed terrestrial scanner owned by NCDOT within the Location and Surveys Unit. The group deploys the scanner throughout the entire state on an as-needed basis. In general, an end user requests geometric or geodetic data without specifying the collection method. Location and Surveys assesses the optimal tool for the required data. The Photogrammetry Unit updates the North Carolina Floodplain Mapping Program's LiDAR elevation data by incorporating aerial photography to provide digital elevation products for functional and preliminary design. When necessary, NCDOT contracts out LiDAR work to third-party providers where the contracts are managed by the private engineering firm's office. For the end users in this effort, we focused on the units and groups that are suggested by the Steering and Implementation Committee. In our definition, end users are all groups that receive processed point cloud data or LiDAR-derived products to be used in their business areas. For this project, we met with the construction, geotechnical engineering, hydraulics, pavement management, roadway design, structures management, state road management, traffic safety, and visualizations unit and groups to present useful LiDAR applications and receive feedback on where business groups thought LiDAR showed promise. This is the list of transportation applications we synthesized through research, interviews, and surveys. Some of these applications included pavement applications, such as contours, superelevation, the identification of drainage problems, grades, and cross slopes. Bridge applications, such as vertical clearances, health monitoring, including cracks, deformation, and settlement. Geotechnical uses, such as slope stability, volumetric displacement, and deterioration rate prediction modeling. Safety applications, such as line of sight obstruction and airport obstruction. Construction quality control and quality assurance applications, including developing as-built plans and archiving purposes. Design and project estimation applications, including highway widening and volumetric data. Traffic operation applications, such as vehicle counts, classification, and velocity for each vehicle category, as well as intersection movement patterns. Asset inventory uses, including distance measuring and automatic identification of assets. Additionally, many supplemental applications for transportation agencies or other agencies include flood mapping, fault detection, dune monitoring, infrastructure health monitoring, historical preservation, public relations visualizations, crime scene investigation, and power line monitoring. The final report from the research project includes detailed case studies on many LiDAR applications. From the business areas and transportation applications discussed within our report, we attempted to develop a matrix to summarize our findings. For rows, we have listed applications that can be carried out with LiDAR, and the columns represent the specific business areas. The optimal LiDAR platform was based solely on the research knowledge we gained during this project. It does not say that a platform cannot be used for the specific applications, but rather to suggest which platform in general may be most effectively and efficiently deployed for the given application. The matrix consists of X's where primary business areas could use specific applications. In order to reduce overlap, we tried to be as distinct as possible. Take the applications of floodplain and inundation mapping, high definition hydraulic modeling, and hydrologic steam stream modeling. Each application, although related, requires different accuracies, varies in project sizes, and may be carried out by multiple business areas. As another example, corridor mapping and highway planning has a scope of work over miles or acres of land typically. Therefore, it would not seem cost effective to conduct fixed terrestrial LIDAR at setups of 250 to 500 feet increments. On this slide, we examine the second part of the matrix. And again, I'd like to remind you that the matrix does not indicate that only the types of LiDAR listed are appropriate for that application. Rather, the matrix presents a general perspective of the most appropriate LiDAR types in a likely scenario. 
In meeting with the various groups and units, we received feedback on the most promising utilization of LiDAR. We found a trend towards using three-dimensional files as opposed to two-dimensional files. Basic point cloud viewers and tools are readily available as add-ins for software. By incorporating point clouds and elevation data, highway designers are receiving more accurate data to base roadway curves and side slope features on. Also, based on discussions with the Information Technology Department, the technological infrastructure and information transfer protocol is set up to reduce redundancy in data and maintain data integrity. When a raw point cloud is produced or obtained, the overseeing party should filter and clean the data set before any attempts of passing it over to the central server. A general end user should never require the need to access raw point clouds. For best practice, end users should receive the final LiDAR derived information or product of which they requested and if they need access to a cleaned point cloud, manipulation should be limited to basic viewing and editing capabilities. We surveyed the other 49 state transportation agencies with responses from 36. In terms of platform deployment, 19 of the 36 states conducted or contracted airborne LIDAR, 15 used mobile terrestrial, and 19 used fixed terrestrial. For the license requirements, states differ in law and practice. Some agencies regulate the operation and collection of LIDAR under, under professional land surveyor laws, while others may not require a public land surveyor for internal work, but do for third-party contracts. Finally, the overall consensus is that LIDAR is an exceptional tool for transportation applications, but will always require quality assurance and quality control checks throughout the process of utilization, similar to checks used throughout all surveying methods. Careful planning and attention must be paid on how and where scanning should be carried out, and clearly defined specifications and accuracy requirements are important for LiDAR data and derived products. To compare LiDAR with traditional surveying methods, performance measures should first be established for various aspects. Much like the comparison of LiDAR platforms in the earlier slide, aspects for evaluating advantages and disadvantages of utilizing one tool over another may include cost, delivery time, safety, and data quality. LiDAR may have many potential benefits over conventional methods, but often these benefits may not be fully realized or easily quantified. Thus, the comparison chart shown earlier can be modified to address and determine the optimal tool to be deployed for a given project. To illustrate this possibility, we've developed an example based on work by Richard Vincent and Michael Ecker, who conducted an evaluation of LiDAR for the Missouri Department of Transportation by comparing the three LiDAR platforms with traditional methods for roadway design utilization. A mapping company was hired to collect data using all types of LiDAR on a seven mile section of highway. The evaluation found that conventional aerial mapping along with airborne LiDAR provided the shortest potential schedule for collecting mapping data because of the speed of collection. For cost, conventional aerial mapping and airborne LiDAR were the most effective. LiDAR benefited primarily from safety enhancements and data quality, but was at a disadvantage for data processing and management. The display radar chart has been developed to visually illustrate the evaluation of the five methods used in that study. Although LiDAR was not the most promising tool for the specific road, roadway design application, the technology should still be considered for its cost effectiveness and potential benefits over its entire life cycle deployment. Although seemingly expensive, the costs are reduced when considering the continually decreasing cost of advanced technologies maturing over time and their cost reduction of limiting field data collection redundancy and project change orders attributed to high quality data sets. Although LiDAR costs continue to become more affordable as the technology matures, the initial purchase and setup of LiDAR systems can be a costly investment. Along with the expenses of scanners, sensors, and vehicle equipment, the adopting agency also will be required to make investments on personnel training, workstation upgrades, software purchases, and information technology infrastructure. Therefore, when assessing the total budget for LiDAR acquisition, the interested party should evaluate their current capabilities and assets and take into account any additional investments required for a fully functional LiDAR system. When considering the acquisition of LiDAR systems or contracted services, a transportation agency should take into account the type of system best suited for the agency's needs, the agency's capital and funding availability, their human resources and organizational structure, the capacity of the agency's information technology infrastructure, and the inherent limitations and risks of technological investments. In deciding which system best suits a particular transportation agency, 
The business areas within the agency and their goals and responsibilities should be reviewed. Fixed, mobile, and airborne LIDAR should be utilized when appropriate. The applications and examples outlined in this presentation can provide guidance in platform selection and support their implementation. Furthermore, the system chosen must be assessed to ensure that the data and products derived will meet specifications defined by the governing standards and regulations. The options for LIDAR acquisition include third-party contracts, renting, purchasing, or fractionally owning. The primary advantage to contracting services is the contractor provides the necessary tools to produce a final deliverable for a project. Thus, the agency is not hampered with significant capital investment, personnel training, data processing, technological obsolescence, and equipment maintenance and depreciation. For means of logistical optimization, contracting LIDAR services can be most effective when pairing or combining multiple projects to reduce unit costs. Renting and operating does reduce the risk of op obsolescence as well as maintenance and depreciation costs. The added benefit with equipment rental is schedule flexibility and equipment availability. Again, by combining multiple projects, LIDAR utilization can be more cost effective. When considering the high initial costs of purchasing, operating, and maintaining LIDAR, the advantage is the lower life cycle cost. This option will benefit from frequent, long-term use. Finally, fractional ownership is an alternative when investment costs are economically infeasible. The benefits are reduced entry costs and obsolescence risks. Many plans include incremental fees to cover maintenance and insurance by third parties. Thank you for your interest in this research effort.